Senator Davis is here. We'll get started now. <laughs> Okay, welcome to the Utah Senate. This is our time to take questions from the media and from people who are watching us over the internet. I have, I'm President Niederhauser. I have joining with me our minority leader, Senator Davis, and our majority leader, Senator Van Tassel. We are, uh, committees have ended. You're now on the floor full time in the next couple of days and maybe overtime on a couple of nights. <laughs> Home Dang stretch. It. Home stretch. So we'll, uh, first of all, we encourage uh, anybody that's watching to send in a question. We'll take questions from our media representatives. You got to deal with our schools now yet? Senator Adams? Uh, they gave us a proposal. I don't know how well it's being, being received by colleagues. I think they're just trying to absorb it. I think, uh, you know, there's challenges. We've, we've raised the gas tax a couple of times in the last few years, and I think there's, they're just trying to uh, process it. And I'm not sure how my colleagues are looking at it right now, but we have a proposal, and uh, it'll take a little bit of time for them to think about it. We don't have a lot of time, but we'll see what happens. What's, when's the deadline for that? Let's see, I think it's midnight. <laughs> so you can take it up, I mean, pretty much any time between now and then. I just didn't know if there was like a, you, you call it or you. No, 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 I think uh, the deadline should have been uh, about a month ago if we had, had my way, you know. We, we, uh, this last minute stuff is hard on all of us. Are you planning on taking it to the caucus? Or are you going to let it stand on its own? The House is telling us that they're not going to take it to the caucus if they can find 38 votes that passes. We, we mentioned it to our caucus. Uh, we, I don't think we've had any further discussions, so I think they're aware of it. And we'll probably uh, just try to, you know, uh, we don't have any plans to take it and try to get a, a, a vote in Congress right now. You said that may happen, but I don't know. We don't have plans to do it. You said they gave us a proposal. Is it? Did they bring this, all the idea to you and, and uh, Representative Wilson, or did you all work on it together? Uh, we worked with them on it. It's it's uh, 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 in the 1990s. Um, some of us are old enough. Some of you are not to remember the 1990s. Uh, well, thanks for looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew where to go with that. But uh, back then, in the in the olden days, I suppose we uh, we paid 100 percent of our transportation funding by kind of a novel fund. It was called the Transportation Fund. It was 100% paid for out of the gas tax. And then uh, President Beatty, I'll, I'll kind of talk about him because I know him so well, but he was Senate President and the Olympics were coming and they wanted to fund the uh, uh, I-15 construction through Solid Valley for the Olympics and other projects for the Olympics. So they actually did something that's never been done before in our state history and used uh, general funds, $90 million, to fund transportation projects. We, we've grown that fund from $90 million to $600 million. And there are many people who believe that's not very good tax policy. Uh, that as you, as you uh, use something, you ought to pay for it. So user fees ought to pay for uh, the expense of those that use the facilities. So we've got kind of a disconnect there because we use so much general fund money for transportation. And then if you've been in press availability, you've heard the president talk about income tax and how what 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 a vital role uh, what a vital role uh, income tax pays and plays in economic development. In other words, those states with high income tax rates don't do very good uh, economically. Those states with low income tax outperform by far those other states. And so income tax is a very important So if you had to trade a pack, an income tax increase for a user fee increase, that is a better alignment, in my opinion, than, uh, than having income tax go up. So we've given them that, that input, which I don't think is anything uh, 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 new. And so, the, but that is their proposal. I mean, we, uh, yeah. 
I'll just leave it at that. Okay. But we've had input on it. Are you? Are you? Is anybody from the Senate trying to sell it to the House to, to pass it through the House? You guys do a network? No. Not that I know of. I thought it was negotiated together with the Senate. And yeah, we, I mean, we, we, we nego there were there were people in the ball in the negotiation, but there was never a, there was never uh, those the, the points of the discussion were never brought back to a, to a group, and there was never a caucus position or support for it. It's simply an idea that that probably has better alignment with tax policy than the current proposal, and I don't know how it'll be received. It, you know. I've, Again, I think there is some some hesitation because we've had so many increases in the gas tax that it's not very popular right now to, to increase gas tax. The, the 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 question is, what does the public think, and does it does it hurt to take it to the public and get their opinion? So, so if I read this right, it sounds like you really don't have a deal. No, there's not a deal. You thought you did. No. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't think you ever thought we did. I thought the the, the, the process was that uh, we we would try to bring an idea to our caucuses and see how they what they thought. There's a I would call it a proposal. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So it's not likely to be stuck in a bill or put in any kind of appropriations at this point? No, not unless there's consensus among our colleagues. So in the House, I think it's 38, in the Senate, it's 15, and in the governor's office, it's one. But this would take legislation, right, to create the ballot question? It would. They've agreed to withdraw their ballot initiative if we actually put a ballot initiative on it. There is some, some hesitation by some of the call, my colleagues to step in front of another ballot initiative uh, because you know that's that's a challenge. It, it wasn't originally initiated by the legislature, so that's a, that's being talked among the call my colleagues or senators too. So it's a process, and we'll see how the where the process takes us. That last point, did you mean the optics in the public of, of passing something that would replace the initiative that others have brought? Is that what your point was? Well, I mean. I don't believe the Senate or the House started with the ballot initiative because we have the power to do this on our own. So we, so now we got we got in front of a ballot initiative, and that, that they're just wondering if, if they've got a champion or if our schools now will, or who's going to champion that the ballot initiative. Any other questions? What's happening with <clears throat> budget negotiations? There are a lot of rumors that there's. Um, a lot of friction going on right now, and um, any, kind of any friction process. that we've had in the past in the past week is is subsided, and right now things are working pretty smoothly. And we have our budget bills out; those were agreed upon, and we're working now with our EAC chairs, and the speaker and I are talking about other items that will end up in the bill of bills. So most of the physical note bills were read in. If you look at the House uh, calendar, or the third reading calendar, the, those bills above the, those that are circled are all physical note bills. So we agree to those. So what did it take to get back on track after last week? A weekend. <laughs> Skiing. <laughs> Fresh air. The answer Fresh air. I'll do it every time. For me, another, another trip down with my grandson. That doesn't do it work. Yeah, it's good that, you know, time does it, it starts to heal, and we we understand we've got a deadline, and we've had conflict before, we've had tension before, but we've always had a budget at the end, and everybody's walked away fairly happy, I think. And we're not going to get everything we want because the requests are yeah. a multiple of the money we have, right? <laughs> and That's right. Not every, you know, not everybody gets everything they want. Yeah. We're really all fantastic. So you got everything you want. No. You said a Democrat, right? You do okay, but uh, we're okay. But Did, we're all pretty good friends, really, and so it doesn't take a lot to respect. I think the the interesting part of doing the budget is uh, people have to get behind ideas. Many ideas this year were brought out with, I would say, cold turkey. I mean. Some of them we didn't know about until we got the works. 
middle of the session. And they're all good ideas, I mean, there are, but there's just not enough funds to go around. And so it becomes that balance of where, what can we do that is best and where can we go? And, and uh, you know, we have multiple agencies, we have education, we have all of those, and everybody has a place, and it's just a matter of coming to, and at the end of the day, you're looking for 15 votes in the Senate, 38 in the House. Hope the governor signs. Has that friction that, that now seems to be smoothed over, did the, has that affected the SAR schools now, um, last minute negotiation, the friction between the House and the Senate? No. I can't tell that there's been that had an effect on it. They're pretty much separate issues. What about the idea of uh, Zero. Your, your push to lower income tax, um, state income tax? Is that going to happen or is that not going to happen? I actually was kind of wondering about that today, so I'm trying to circle around and see where we're at. And I can't tell you. The Senate's behind that. Is that yes, we are. Um, wagering now on support well, for that? I just, we're just waiting for their bill. And part of it could be, you know, part of the uh, focus on the gas tax with high schools now, but the biggest portion of the uh, of the advantage, I think, is the property tax freeze and uh, the dealing with the basic mm -hmm. levy. And uh, but I think they're trying to figure that out, and that's part of the process. So, but it, it's it'll stay dynamic for a while, and that's what makes these last few days fun. We can take a question from our viewers. This viewer asked, "Will the legislature call a special session to address gun reform?" Well, a special session, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that, is for something that we've come to an agreement on. It isn't something we're going to call and have a, a, a long debate on issues that we don't agree with on the House and with the governor. And so I think if there is a time when the governor and the House and the Senate can agree upon an issue with gun, uh, gun laws, gun, gun control, then yes, I think it's possible we could come into a special session, but until that happens, um, we wouldn't be um, advocating that just to come into debate and then vote something down. The, the president's done a really good job, and he's done a really good job, period, but a really good <laughs> job uh, on analyzing what may be the best way to handle school security. I assume when you talk about guns, that's one of the connections to it. But, and I'm, he's made me aware, and I, just by listening to him, that, wow, there's some, there's some things that districts could do. Again, he's asking them to, to look within their own facilities and their own unique events, but, man, a single access into the build, building, and you could even double, double, double gate or whatever that, that access into a building that at when school's in place, that may be the simplest, best way to handle that. And, and there's other ways, okay, but... Sure. But we're, I don't know if that requires a special session, but I think we'll work through the issues and if special sessions are needed, we'll look at them. But it'll probably look, it will probably be looked at in multiple different ways. Any other questions? We do have a second question. Okay. This viewer asked, will the Senate hear HB 205 Down Syndrome Bill? It was moved down the reading calendar today. Could it be made a priority bill to move it up the list? Uh, just to let everybody know, what happens with House bills is uh, while we still control our board, we allow the House to send over priority lists and uh, we'll consider all those as they come over and, and, and prioritize the House bills in, in a partnership with the House, Senate, and House members and we'll see We'll see what happens with that. Um, I'm not sure even what chance that would be at this point, but um, I could probably answer that better maybe tomorrow or even on Thursday. So it wasn't moved down today. Again, what we did, if you look at the House board, we put our, our fiscal bills on top. The reason we did that is we have to decide what we're going to fund because we have to prepare the final bill that will have our budget in it. Very hard to do that at the last minute, so we need to do this that today. The House did the same on our board. 
they put on top of the list their fiscal note bills. So that's just the process we're going through. So yeah, I, the readers may not be aware of it. Even some of my colleagues said, how can we put those other bills on top of mine? And they didn't know that they were fiscal note bills until we told them. So it's just a matter of communication for them. On the calendar, that's usually referred to as the uh, must pass list. Yeah. And that gets us to where we'll be tomorrow afternoon when we go back into the the Appropriations Committee to finish the budget up. Yes. If it gets over here, how is the Donald Trump highway going to fare? <laughs> is that the road to no <laughs> <laughs> Uh We haven't uh, talked about it in caucus. It's. Just, I'm not sure. Does it? I heard, but does it take in that uh, big long road all through the parks? Mm -hmm. The whole thing. Yeah. Well, and I, past Bears Ears and Grand Staircase. Uh, I think it might be. Um, we haven't talked about this as a Senate. Maybe I shouldn't even comment, but I can see naming a highway, uh, the Donald Trump Highway. Uh, but you know, it'd be. I think it makes it more difficult the more. Mile, more roads you put into uh, to that um, policy. So, uh, so it shouldn't we, be we so need. shouldn't be so huge. Well, I mean, I mean, we're you, you got we're going to be talking about it as a well. Senate. We'll figure Could, it out. Could I give you an example? In Davis and Weber County, we have a Highway 89. And it is, is the James V. Hansen Highway. Mm -hmm. Jim, clear back years ago, but at first they named that the James, James V. Hansen Memorial Highway. Mm -hmm. The memorial signs are in his garage right now, and so we have a James V. Hansen Highway. He uh, doesn't would, want the memorial signs to be put up until that's after just, he That's just kind away. of a point of interest that uh, highways can be named, uh, named and changed. Uh, I, when I was a mayor, I tried to rename a higher road the uh, Freedom Boulevard after the first war in Iraq. And, and we ended up coming back and, and leaving that to the, basically the Hillfield Road. That's what the citizens wanted. So, so I, have a, I have a Freedom Boulevard sign in a barn. <laughs> And well, we're, yet to, uh, we're yet to have a discussion about that. The House, I think it, it's uh, not on their board anymore, so we don't, I don't know what the status of it is. But I will, I will say that, uh, I will say that uh, you know, we've seen the, the staircase Escalante uh, when it was uh, de designated by uh, President Clinton. And we really saw no, no action by the following presidents, a lot of more Republicans. And uh, uh, I think overall when you see, and Greg Sheehan used to be the director of our uh, Division of Wildlife Resources here, and I was acting director of Fish and Game. When you see what is done for those rural communities, you could surely, I mean, President Trump has done more than any other president for those type of, what I would say, hunter, fisher, fisherman, uh, outdoors, uh, recreation in the state than any other president. And I, you know, I think we, we have to at least acknowledge that and, and know that that's, uh, that's happened and, you know, all the other stuff that goes on with President Trump. But, uh, but I think, I think uh, it was, I just remember when he was here in the rotunda and I haven't seen that happen. And, in my lifetime with the President of the United States here. So. And that is, a, that is a great debate to have. There is opposition. Is the road for a sitting president the right way to go? Uh, Senator DeBaptist was telling us he's getting calls from all over the country about, about this from major news outlets. I'm sure. Questioning why we're doing this. Yeah. Um, well, I think that will help our economic development and uh, tourism. <laughs> but, I don't think so. <laughs> I'll take one more question. My inbox is filled. Anybody have another Texas. question? If not, Senator Stevenson, how are you feeling about the budget? Uh, good. We're we're getting down where we should be. We've got uh, we've got a, probably a little bit more time this afternoon, and I think we'll have everything over to uh, uh, over where it needs to be, and then we will. Uh, 
I have a bill of bills, and that will probably wrap it up for me quickly. So that'll be tomorrow, a bill of bills? I don't know if it'll happen tomorrow. It'll, it'll be, be Thursday. Thursday. Next day. It'll yeah. be Thursday. Senator, we were talking before you came in about some of the friction and the negotiations, but we were told that's passed. I just came from um, the governor's office, and I think we're, I think we're on a, a good, we've got a good foot forward here right now. We're doing well. Did, did that put you back, though, to have... No, I, I, you know, I've, this is my second year as, as a approach chair, and I can't see, I don't think I felt a lot different last year at this time. <laughs> Thank you. you All guys, right. You guys came back to the table, though, you're going to get the buildings funded that were the point of I, I, I don't know that. I think there's some still some things out there, but, uh, but you know, um, in the words of my predecessor, we don't have to spend it all, so. Thanks, everyone. I think I have a lot of buildings. Thank you. Thanks.